messing it up again. Ironically, Julian goes on to star in the American TV series Nip Tuck about plastic surgery, and you go under the knife yourself. They're good, aren't they? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when you'd had your enhancement, um, how did you feel when you came out and you suddenly had these whoppers? Knockers. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I think it was what I needed at that time. Any other scalpel work that we should be aware of? Or? We do a bit of tweaks and turns, but, you know. What kind of, what kind of tweaks are we... Looking at him. I'm not going to go into it, <laughs> but you know. The one thing I'm quite surprised about is you're frowning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were the queen of Botox. I was. I was at one stage. I was the one pegged out as the one having more Botox than anyone, which was very funny sitting next to Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> <laughs> it's now 2005. You're having a lot of success. You're doing all the clubs. Kylie's career was going great guns as well. Yeah. And then right when things are going really well for both of you, something very, very difficult happens. When it was announced that her sister Kylie was seriously ill, the news sent shockwaves around the world. Messages of support have been flooding in tonight for the pop star Kylie Minogue, who announced today that she has breast cancer. When the illness broke, it really was that sense that w the whole nation felt like they owned this story. Danny was besieged with questions about her sister. All your feelings about your sister's illness is sort of on the front page of the newspapers. It was an endless questions, 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 questions. How is Kylie? You know, is she OK? What, you know, what, how are you feeling? And it wasn't the first time the disease had had an impact on Danny's life. She lost a really good friend um, to cancer. I, myself, being Danny's friend, was also ill with cancer around the same time. It was like everyone around her dad was ill at one stage with the same... It just seemed like everywhere she turned, there was cancer. She found it hard to even speak about for a long time. And she couldn't let any of her emotions show through because she, she, they needed her strength. And that was the most difficult time of her life. For years, the demands of their careers meant the pair had drifted apart. But Kylie's condition helped bring the sisters closer together again. She goes into protective mode and she, she's like a mother hen. In fact, we, call, we sometimes call her Nana. She'd hate me saying that. Nearly every Friday afternoon, she'd go on the Eurostar to Paris with her little you know, wheelie bag. It was like a pet. We used to call it her dog and stroke it. And she'd be running off. She was incredible when I was ill. And would come and put the iPod on and try to get me up and dancing. She was never going to accept Kylie not being here. We've become so much closer over the last few years. We're making up for lost time now and I just, we couldn't be closer and I'm absolutely so thankful to have someone like her in my life and proud to call her my sister. How did you hear? My parents phoned me, and all I could think of was just, I need to be with them now. And of course, it's at least a 26-hour flight away. So, just dealing with the shock, packing a bag, It was the longest flight, as you could imagine. You have to refuel at Hong Kong. Getting off at Hong Kong, going to the, the lounge, and then uh, somebody at the lounge says, uh, there's a film crew here. They're, they're trying to get an interview with you. And I, 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 they could see I was in such shock. And I said, can, can you please just get me to the plane without having to 
speak to them because I haven't spoken to my sister yet. I've spoken to my parents. She's in shock. I can't speak to anyone before I speak to her. That's insane. So we got on, you know, those those buggies that go through the airport with the beep, beep, beep. We're going through the airport. This film crew chasing me. And all I wanted to do was see my gorgeous sister and hug her. What was the first thing you said to Cardi when you saw her? I don't even remember. It was just a blur, but it was more about just giving her a hug and... Supporting her, I mean, she was scared. And being there for my parents too, because at the time I just thought, however scary this is for all of us, I think it's, it's got to be the hardest for the parents. It's got to be. She had to have an operation three days later. That must have been a horrendous three days for your family. In those three days... There is so much medical information to absorb, to work out what's, what's the best treatment, who would be doing it, how it would happen, all of that. And that's anyone going through it. That's, that's, that's their three very, very tough days. What was good about this terrible situation was it did bring the pair of you closer together, didn't it? I think you just, you, you just go to another depth, I would call it, rather than closeness. A depth of... Um, you find strength within yourself that you never thought you had because you never needed it before. Were there periods when you as a family feared she wouldn't make it? No. Never thought of it. Couldn't. You don't. You just refused to? Refuse. Come. What was it like the day when she got the all clear? Well, there's the all clear and then there's the all all clear, as anyone who's been through cancer knows. You get the, it's all clear now from the operation, it's all clear now from the chemo. You get the, it's all clear gone, then you get you're six months all clear, you're one year all clear. And the big year, the, 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 the proper one is the five year all clear. We're not there yet. But it's looked good so far, hasn't it? It looks incredible and, you know, she's just been so strong and in my head nothing's going to come back because it's just not going to happen. After Kylie's given the initial all clear, you get more good news when you are made a judge on a show called Australia's Got Talent. I mean, I have to say, I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but I've seen the Australian show, and they are, apart from you, a very odd-looking bunch. <laughs> <laughs> when you watch Britain's Got Talent, say, how do you think it compares the Australian show? It's a completely different ball game and for the fact that we don't have that history of kind of vaudeville and performing at the end of the pier and the whole show's beauty is that it's just such a mixture of the good, the bad, the ugly, the mad and the wonderful 